Hey everyone, this is Dreadnought and Archon. Hey guys. We're back from a two week vacation to Florida. We were visiting our sister, but we are back and we have some new content of Act 3 Inferno. We've switched up our gear and abilities a little bit. We're a little bit more damage intensive and we'll talk a little bit about what we're doing differently later. Uh, and we also have an announcement of the winner of the gear giveaway from before we went on vacation. We have a little video that we'll throw in the end of this video uh, to see the gear upgrade that our winner Proigy got. And we also have a winner from last week. So last week we weren't here to announce the winner, but we'll sh throw it on the screen here. The winner of last week was this random series of numbers. <laughs> I guess he doesn't have an actual name, but uh, 054, uh, you know the rest. You are the winner of last week, so we will be contacting you on YouTube in the next day or two uh, to meet up with you and get you your upgrade. But uh, starting this week, we're going to be doing the gear giveaway a little bit differently, so stick around till the end of the video, and we'll tell you what you need to do to be eligible for next week's item. And like I said, we are we have a little bit different uh, rotation and skill ability set uh, than you are used to seeing us use. Uh, because of the 1.0.3 patch, there's a lot more gear out on the auction house for uh, cheaper prices, prices comparatively. And so we have some upgrades that we're using and it allows us to use a little bit uh, more offensive uh, build and most of it is based off of Archon's new ability set. Yeah, so if you guys remembered before 1.0.3, actually way before, there was this exploit with critical mass, the passive that reduces your cooldowns, so that people were using energy twister like you can see here and getting their cooldowns way down. So Blizzard Hot fixed it, but in 1.0.3, they brought it back. It's just not as overpowered as it once was, but it's now another viable build. And it's probably only one of two viable builds because the other one is just the Blizzard Hydra one that I'm sure you guys have all seen. But the idea is just to um, get really high crit gear. So right now my crit chance is at 45%. You don't need quite that much. And then you have critical mass, so your crits reduce your cooldowns. And then you can use skills like Frost Nova and other high cooldown skills like Archon, and your cooldowns go way down, especially when you're using stuff like Energy Twister, which has a really high attack speed and lets you get a ton of crits. So and if you're used to kiting as the, the wizard and you're thinking, well, what's so awesome about this? Well, it's especially useful in groups because kiting is great when you're solo, but a slowed down enemy is still doing just as much damage to me as the barbarian player so this is especially useful when combined with the melee class because now I don't even have to have uh, some of my more defensive abilities I don't even use my ground stomp with wrenching smash right now instead I can use my battle cry which is uh, increases my damage by 30 percent I got rid of my shield and now I'm dual wielding and so I can do about twice as much damage now as I used to do because of um, all of the frost novas that are going down and uh, it's much more useful for me as a melee class than just slowing down the enemies I take a lot less damage because of it yeah so if you've seen our previous inferno videos you've probably already noticed that we're getting through this much quicker than we used to we can just dish out a lot more damage we have to run away a lot less you can see I actually spend most of my time in Archon when we're not fighting the elite packs just because with the critical mass uh, cooldown reduction, you can go into Archon pretty much any time you want to. And with Dreadnought up there taking most of the hits, I can just sit back and do a ton of damage. And with the extra crit gear, I've gone from about 24,000 DPS up to about 41,000 unbuffed, which is really nice. Yeah, and uh, with uh, Archon also, it works really well with... Uh the war cry impunity because uh, Archon can actually tank as a wizard because of the um, the armor bonuses he gets while he's in Archon form and combined with my war cry uh, it makes him kind of a secondary range tank so it's really nice for survivability yeah and you'll notice the the main I the main skills you're keeping up with this build are diamond skin and frost nova which makes it so you're very rarely taking damage 
And I'll actually be posting another video going over more detail about this build and showing the gear I'm using as well, and I'll put an annotation to that. Uh, if you've been following us for a while, uh, and you are a Barbarian player, then you know that I've been advocating attack speed and life on hit for a long time, and then in the 1.0.3 patch there was a really uh, big nerf to attack speed, and a lot of people are wondering, is attack speed and life on hit still worth it? In my opinion, yes, it is still worth it per se, but it just makes it uh, more viable now to use uh, to stack vitality and then uh, make sure that you're getting those revenge provocation hits um, because like I said we're I'm not getting as much life now just for my frenzy uh, before I could get 3k uh, life per second just by swinging really fast with a one-hander and shield uh, now I can't swing nearly as fast because the attack speed uh, debuff so now I rely a lot on high vitality um, and making sure that I uh, have revenge provocation always in my sight when, you, when it's uh, when it procs and hitting as many people as I can to get a lot of life back that way. Yeah, as you can see, we're just blowing through these white guys. Here's another elite pack. I think we own these guys pretty hard too. Um, but you shouldn't be misled. There are still elite packs that we have trouble with with this build. Since we're both melee now, some of the things that really mess us up are desecrate or Poison Nova, as well as Fire Chains. Molten. Molten. Yeah, almost anything on the ground is a little bit difficult for us. Yeah, so we got lucky with these first two packs. Uh, you'll see us, the third pack we fight, they have uh, Poison Nova, and you'll notice we have a bit more trouble with them. But for the most part, it's a pretty sick strat. Uh, I'm really liking it. You can tell even the elites are frozen almost half the time. Uh, we can both just stand in there and DPS non-stop, not nearly as much running around. So if you're if you're a wizard and you play in group games, then keep in mind that this uh, this strat is really useful for us melee class because usually if I join a public game, I'll get the demon hunters and the wizards that like to use their normal kiting abilities like Blizzard, and that's really great for kiting. But as a, a melee class. Uh, slowing down enemies is useful but not nearly as useful as stunning or freezing enemies yeah it's really the same thing when when they're frozen they're just as good as stunned and it's it's not as viable a build for all wizards because you need a lot of crit you probably need at least uh 25 30 percent crit chance and you still need a lot of survivability too even though you have diamond skin and frost nova off cooldown all the time if you don't have enough resistances and armor then you're gonna that diamond skin is gonna get eaten through really quickly, and you're not gonna be able to take uh, the hits to be able to stand there long enough. Yeah, I know a lot of wizards and demon hunters like to use the glass cannon uh, method of of doing tons of damage and not taking a lot of hits. Uh, but I really advocate some of the survivability because their repair costs are so high, and even if you're doing half the DPS, you can still move through this. Uh, just as quickly if you're not dying at all compared to using some of those really fragile builds where you die often. Yeah, I was just playing around with builds yesterday and dying a lot because I was having trouble coming up with good ones and I went through about 500,000 gold just in repair and potion costs and, and that's including all the stuff I was picking up too. So it can definitely get expensive uh, if you start dying a lot. You'll notice I'm uh, dual wielding now instead of uh, using a one-hander and a shield and uh, it's working out really well for me but I don't recommend it for everyone you need a certain amount of resist and vitality uh, attack speed and life on hit before it really becomes a viable build um, just because shields just uh, they absorb so much damage with a, like a 3 to 4k damage reduction that has like a 20% or higher uh, block chance it's just and you can get like 70 all resist on them pretty easily it, it gives you a huge defense bonus and armor bonus but I'm really liking the dual wield right now but like I said if you don't already have a strong defense it might not work as well for you I just got vortex raped right there <laughs> you see I'll, I'll show that again too happened pretty quickly but we come back and we do a pretty good job with retaliation um, dreadnought ran away and waited for me a little bit yeah and sometimes 
it's just really frustrating if if both people die. Some of these elite groups heal so quickly, and um, and so it's usually worth it. To, uh, it doesn't take that long for the other person to get back to just run away and stay safe for the other person to get back. Yeah. So at this point, Dreadnought started having some frame rate issues, so it's gonna cut off a little early. But uh, I will play the rest of this fight on my channel at least. And if you've watched the whole video right now, you can watch the Barbarian Perspective on Dreadnought's channel, and you can watch the Wizard Perspective on Archon's channel. Yeah, we'll put annotations on each video so you can switch over if you'd like to see the other perspective as well. If you guys haven't already subscribed to either of our channels, please do that. We're trying to put out a video every day. We've been putting out one video a week, but we want to up that because a lot of people have been asking for more videos. And we appreciate the support we get from our subscribers, so in return we are rewarding them with uh, gear giveaways and a uh, chance to play with us on occasions. Yeah, so I mentioned earlier we're going to be changing how we're doing the gear giveaways. The reason being that it's getting harder to find upgrades for some of you guys that have really good weapons. And so what we're doing instead is each Friday we'll show you guys an awesome piece of gear that we either found or just found a really good deal on the auction house. And if it's an upgrade for you, you can let us know in the comments. And you must be able to use the gear. It'll probably all be level 60 gear, so please only post if you're level 60 or very close to it. And we will randomly pick one of you guys and we will give you the item uh, probably the next day or the day after so you don't uh, get an upgrade before we give it to you. And so this week's item is this Dominion Remnant. They're rare shoulders uh, for barbarians. So they have 140 strength, 112 vitality, 69 all resistance. Great shoulders for any barbarian. If these are an upgrade for you and you have a level 60 barbarian, go ahead and post a comment in the description and we will contact you on YouTube. Thanks. And also we'll go ahead and show you that gear that we got for Proigy so you can see what he got. And thanks for watching. If you liked the video, hit subscribe um, and let us know if you uh, want to be el if you're on a U.S. server. If you want to be eligible to play with us, yeah, we'll be playing with a subscriber this weekend. So look out for that video. See you next time.